Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE, where we're coming to you live from Detroit, Michigan, at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. We're going to keep the cube puns coming this afternoon because we have the pleasure of being joined by not one, but two guests from Kubia. John Furrier, my wonderful co-host, you're familiar with these guys. You just chatted with them last week. We broke the story of their launch and featured them on the cube in our studio, in studio conversation. This is a great segment. Real innovative company with lofty goals and they're really good ones. <laughs> Looking forward if to If that's not a tease to keep <laughs> watching, I don't know what is. Without further ado, on that note, allow me to introduce Amit and Shakid, who are here to tell us all about Kibia. And I'm going to blow the pitch for you a little bit just because this gets me excited. <laughs> They're essentially the Siri of DevOps, but that means you can you can create using voice or chat or any medium. Am I right? Is this, yeah? yeah? You're hired. Excellent. <laughs> we'll take okay. It. We'll take it. Who knows what I'll tell the chat to do or what, I'll, what I will control with my voice, but I love where you're uh, at. Absolutely. I'll, I'll just give the high level uh, conversational AI for the world of DevOps, kind of redefining how self-service DevOps is supposed to be essentially accessed, right? As opposed to just having siloed information, uh, you know, having different platforms that require the operator or somebody who's using it to know exactly how they're accessing, what they're doing, and so forth. Essentially, the ability to express your intent in natural language, English or any language. It's I quite use. literally a language barrier sometimes, Precisely. both from the spoken as well as code language, and it sounds like you're eliminating that as an obstacle. We're essentially saying, turn simple um, complex tasks into simple conversations. That's, that's really what we're saying here. So, so let's get into the launch. You just launched a yeah. fresh startup. Yeah, so yeah. you guys are yeah. going to take on the world. Lofty goals, <laughs> I, I had sure. the briefing. Um, where's the origination story come from? What, how did you guys get here? Was it a problem that you saw, you were experiencing, an itch you were scratching? What was the motivation and what's the origination story? So, go first, essentially yeah. everything started um, with my experience as being an operator. I used to be a DevOps engineer for a few years for a large fintech company. On later stages, I even managed an SRE team. So all of this uh, access requests, Q&A stuff, is uh, something that I experienced nonstop on Slack or uh, Teams, all of these communication channels. And usually I found out that ev everything happens from the chat. So essentially back then I created a chatbot. Um, I connect this chatbot to the different organizational tools, and instead of the developers approaching to me or the team using the on-call channel or directly, they will just approach the bot. But essentially, the bot was very naive, and they still needed to know what they, they, they want to do inside the bot. But it still managed to solve 70% of the complexity and the toil on us as a team, so we could focus on innovation. So, KUBI is a more advanced version of it. Basically, with KUBI, you can define what we call workflows, and we convert all of this complexity of access requests into simple conversations that the end users, which could be developers, but not only, are having with the DevOps team. So that's essentially how it works, and uh, we're very excited about so it. So you were up all night answering the same question over and over again? Is that the yeah. point? And you said, hey, <laughs> screw it, I'm going to just create a bot, bot myself <laughs> up. But it gets at something important, I mean, I'm going to just joke, it probably happened, right? That was probably the case? You were up all night telling? Yeah, I mean, it was usually stuff that uh, we didn't need to maintain. It was trending requests and questions that just keep on repeating themselves, and actually, we were in Israel, but we served three different uh, uh, time zones of developers. So all of these developers, as soon as the day finishes in Israel, the day in the US started. So they would approach us from the US, so we didn't really sleep. <laughs> and so we did request non -stop. It's that 24 hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 24 yeah. hours for a single team. So. The world clock, global team yeah, thing catches exactly. you a little sometimes. So you yeah. basically take all the things that you know that are common, and then make a chatbot answer as if you're you, uh, but this brings up the whole question of chatbot utilization. There's been a lot of debate in, in the AI circles that you know, chatbots really haven't made it. They haven't been good enough. So, because of NLP and other trivial sure, things sure. that haven't really clicked. What's different now? How do you guys see your approach, cracking the code, to go that kind of reasoning level? Absolutely. Bots can reason, now we're in business. But yeah. 
most of the chatbots are uh, general purpose, right? We're coming with the domain expertise. We know the pain from the inside. We know how the operators want to define such conversations that users might have with the virtual assistant. So we combined all of the technical tools that are needed in order to get it going. So we have a, a DSL, domain specific language, where the operators can define these easy conversations and combine all of the different organizational tools which can be done using the SDK. Besides this fact, we have a no code for less technical people to create um, such workflows even with a no code interface. And we have a CLI which you could use to leverage uh, the power of the virtual assistant even right from your terminal. So that's how I see the domain expertise coming in that we have different communication channels for everyone that needs to be inside the loop. That's and, awesome. I, and I can add to that, so that's one element which is the domain expertise. The other one is really our huge differentiator. The ability to let the end users influence the, the system itself. So like how, give an example. Sure, it, we call it teach me feature, but essentially if you have any type of a request and the system hasn't, um, hasn't created an automation or hasn't, uh, doesn't recognize it, you can go ahead and bind that into your intent and next time, and you can uh, define the scope for yourself only, for the team, or even for the entire organization that actually has to have permissions and access the request and controls and so on. That's a, yeah, I love that as a knowledge base. I mean, a custom toolkit. Absolutely. And I like that you just said for the individual, so let's say I have some crazy workflows that I don't need anybody else 100%. to know about. I can customize my experience. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself, this is really interesting and I'm, it, it's surprising to me we haven't seen a lot of players in this space before because what you're doing makes a lot of sense to me, especially as someone who is less technical, yeah. do you view yourselves as a gateway tool for more folks to be involved in more complex technology? So, so, so I'll take the, it's not that we haven't seen advanced virtual assistants, they've existed in different worlds. Up right. until now, they've existed more in CRM tools, uh, right. call centers, right? You go on uh, to yeah, Ralph just... Ray, Calvin Klein, you go and chat with, <laughs> now imagine you can bring that into a world of dev tools that has high domain expertise, high technical amp amplitude, and now you can go and combine the domain expertise with the accessibility of conversational AI. That's, that's a unique feature here. What's yeah. the biggest thing that surprised you with the launch so far? Um, the reaction to the name, <laughs> sure. Cubia, which is Cube in Hebrew, yes. apparently. Which I love. Which, by the way, you know, we have a TM and R on our Cube, <laughs> so I mean, top, you know, <laughs> what, what, license rights, okay. The oh, Cube, okay. The What's Cube, up the, the trademark Cube. trolls today, John, here? We're, we're here to share oh, we're information. Open, we're open source and closed the audience. Sorry about that. I'll let you slide this time. The KubeCon, the Cube, and Kubia. <laughs> In the Hebrew, we have this saying, third time, we all have ice cream, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's some ice cream over there, uh, actually. There is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you all, all kidding aside, all fun. What's, what's been the reaction? You got some press coverage. We had to launch, you guys launched with the Cube in here. Uh, big reception. What's been the common feedback? I, and really, I think I expected this, but I didn't expect this much. Uh, uh, really, the fact that people really believe in our thesis, really expect uh, great things from us, right? We've started to work in with uh, rolling out on. dozens of, of POCs, but even that requires uh, obviously a lot of attention to the detail which we're rolling out. This is effectively what we're seeing. People love the fact that you have a unique and fresh way to approaching the self-service, which really has been stalled for a while, and, yeah. and we've recognized that. I think our thesis is, is what Okay, we're so at. as a startup, you have lofty goals, you have investors now, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. They're going to want to keep the traction going, but as, a, as the North Star, what's your, what are you going to, what are you going to take? What territory are you going to take? Is it new territory? Are you eating someone's lunch? Who are you going to be competing with? What's the target? What's that, what's that? Sure, sure. I'm sure Back you guys have it. No, but you were taking over. I think the <laughs> gateway, the entry point to every organization is a bottleneck. You solve the hard problem first, that's where you can go into other directions and you can imagine where other operational workflows and, and uh, pains that we can help solve once we have uh, essentially so the DevOps and the- So you see this new opportunity? Or I believe so. Is there so. an incumbent uh, where, you see out there, an old stodgy? Today we're, we're on uh, uh, an internal developer platform, service catalog type of uh, you know, use cases, yep. but that's kind of where we can grow from there and have the ecosystem essentially embrace us. How about the technology platform? What's the vision yeah. for the innovation? 
Essentially, we want to be able to integrate with all of the different cloud providers, cloud solutions, SaaS platforms, and take the headless approach that you were using right to the chats, from everywhere to anywhere. So, essentially, we want in the end that users will be able to do anything that they need inside all of these complicated platforms, which some of them are truly complicated, mm -hmm. with plain English. So what's the biggest challenge for you then on that front, leading the technology side of the team? <laughs> so, I would say that the conversational AI part is uh, truly complicated because it requires to extract many types of intentions from different types of users and also integrate with so many tools and solutions. So yeah. it requires a lot of um, thinking, a lot of um, architecture, but uh, we're doing it uh, just fine. Awesome, what do you guys think about KubeCon this week? What's, what's the top story that you see emerging out of this? Just generally as an industry observer, what's the most important? Maybe it's them, what's the announcement most halo. Story yeah. <laughs> you see? I mean, you guys are in the, in the automation, the in, we, intent based infrastructure, I get that. So obviously everyone's looking uh, to diversify uh, <laughs> their engineering, diversify their platforms to make sure they're as decoupled from the main CSPs as possible, so being able to build their own. And we're really helping enable a lot of that uh, in there. We're really helping uh, prove the point that open source together with uh, managed platforms can really play a very nice game together, so. Awesome, so are you guys hiring, recruiting? Tell Absolutely. us about the team DNA, I know you're Definitely. at Tel Aviv, you're in the Bay. Check yeah. our openings on LinkedIn. <laughs> 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 we have a dozen job postings on our website, obviously yeah. engineering and sales, then uh, go to market. Right, so when the Cube comes to Tel Aviv and we have a location there, yeah. we'd be totally. Is this totally. Tel Aviv space, you know? right now? We would be hosting cube you. With the C <laughs> and the Cube with the K over there. Yeah. <laughs> All one happy family. Would love Get that. some ice cream. Would love that. <laughs> All right, so last question for y'all. You just had a very big, exciting announcement. Yes. It's, it's a bit of a coming out party for you. What do you hope to be able to say in a year that you can't currently say right now when you join us on theCUBE next time? <laughs> no, no, it's absolutely. I think our thesis that you can turn conversations into operations, it's, it sounds obvious to you when you think about it, but it's not trivial when you look into the workflows and to, the operations, the fact that we can actually go a year from today and say we got hundreds of customers, happy customers, who have proven the thesis or sharing knowledge between themselves, that would be euphoric for us. All right. You really are about helping people. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. It doesn't seem like it's just lip service from both of you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is there going to be levels of bot, like level one bot, level two, level three, and then finally the SRE gets on the phone? Is that like some point? Are we going like to reach bot escalate? singularity? Is that, <laughs> is that what we're exploring like right some now? Some kind of um, um, escalation bot. Levels of enlightenment <laughs> with bots. We're actually playing a feature we want to call a handoff where a human in the loop is, in, is required, which often uh, is needed. Mm -hmm. Machine cannot do it alone, yeah. we'll just yeah, I think it makes total sense for geos, ops are the same, but not yeah. exactly the same. Really good, good solution. I love the direction. Congratulations on the launch. Thank you so Thank much. You very much. Yeah, that's very exciting. You can obviously uh, look, check out that news on Silicon Angle since we had the pleasure of breaking it. Absolutely. If people would like to say hi, stalk you on the internet, where's the best place for them to do that? Be on our Twitter and LinkedIn handles, of course. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, we have. Uh, kubia.ai, uh, we also have a free trial until the end of the year, and we also have um, free forever tier that people can sign up, play, and, and come say hi. I mean, we'd love to chat. I love it. Well, Mitch, Shaked, thank you so much for being thank with you us. So much. John, thanks for sitting to my left for the entire day. <laughs> I, I sincerely appreciate <laughs> Glad it. Glad I could help out. And thank <laughs> you all for tuning in to this wonderful edition of theCUBE, live from Detroit at KubeCon. Who knows what my voice will be controlling next? But either way, I hope you're there to find out. <laughs>